friends we will now see about the renal functional test now as the name suggests renal functional test help us to understand the functioning of the renal system which means the different parts of the uh, uh, the nephrons the tubules and and the kidney as a whole okay so we have around four different types of tests that we do the first one is the renal tubular reabsorption test so the renal tubular reabsorption test would help us to understand about how much the tubules are able to reabsorb the solutes and how they are permeable to water and solutes their ability to do so right so this is called as also known as the concentration test now there are basically two kinds of tests that we do here we check out the osmolarity of the uh, urine solution which means that the uh, we check out the the number uh, or the amount of substances the solutes which are present in the urine solution and we will also check about the specific gravity now specific gravity would depend not just up on the quantity or the number of solutes in the solution but it will also see the density of the solutes now as we know specific gravity is a comparison it's a, it's a comparison between the uh, the density of a substance as well as the density of water which has the same volume of that of the substance now the second test is known as the tubular secretion or the renal blood flow test now in this test we need to make use of a chemical called as para amino hypuric acid is also known as pah okay now what the importance of this chemical is that this chemical will be infused into the patient's body now the doctors will infuse the chemical into the patient's body and then the amount of the chemical which is present in the patient's body will be checked after a period of time now ideally the kidneys are, is the kidneys are supposed to eliminate this chemical completely out of the patient's body but if it is not done if if the chemical is still retained if there is the presence of chemical it means that the kidney has not completely removed it that means there is some problem with the functioning with the filtering ability of the kidney there is also a clearance test such as osmolar or free water clearance test which is done in the case of detecting various types of diabetes it's used in the diagnosis of various types of diabetes then it also helps in checking out the renal clearance of solutes and substance free water now we have a test called as the glomerular test it is used to assess the renal waste removal and the solute reabsorbing abilities so for that we need uh, we need to check out the presence of creatinine so there is a difference in the level of creatinine present in the plasma as well as that the one that the the creatinine which is seen in the urine now ideally the 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 variation the value of creatinine does not change much with diet and other factors okay so how do we do this test there is a basically a formula for this for checking out the creatinine clearance and and the formula is given by c is equal to u into v upon p into 1.73 meter cube slash sa now what are these factors what is what are all these terms now c stands for the creatinine level in ml per minute and u stands for the urine creatinine in milligram per deciliter v stands for the amount of urine which is produced in 24 hours divided by 1000 440 p stands for the serum or the creatinine present in the serum or plasma and sa stands for the body surface area which is uh, and 1.73 value stands for the average body surface area so let's go through this formula again so c is equal to u into v slash p into 1.73 m cube slash sa where c is the creatinine level which is seen after the after the calculation so what are the factors here u u stands for urine creatinine in milligram per deciliter v stands for the 24 hour urine which is produced divided by 1440 p stands for the the plasma or the serum creatinine and 1.73 m cube is the average body surface area and sa is the body surface area now for this test we need to use a 24 hour timed urine 
that is the specimen of choice. Now the reference values would differ from uh, across uh, genders and also uh, with, with age, there will be variation with age. So in males, the values is almost 105 plus or minus 20 ml per minute and for females it is 95 plus or minus 20 ml per minute. Now we will see about the urine volume and sample handling. Now the normal output of a urine from a healthy individual should be around 600 to 2000 ml in 24 hours. So it could it would be within this range. Now there are factors which affect the output of urine. Factors such as the fluid intake, factors such as the food intake, the factors such as the uh, loss of electrolytes, okay, and also the presence of diuretic and antidiuretic hormone levels. Now, based on this condition, the uh, based on the output of urine, uh, there will be around, we can categorize or we can make out around four different types of conditions. Now, first one is called as oliguria, which means there is decrease in urine output. So, this would happen if, so this would happen in the case of dehydration, vomiting, diarrhea, etc. So, any process in the body which has led to loss of fluids would cause oliguria. Now, anuria means there is no urine output. So, this is seen if there is a renal failure or any problem associated with the renal system. Now, nocturia means there is, excrete, there is excess of urination which happens during the night time. So this is seen if the, per, if the person has taken a lot of fluid intake during the night or even in the case of a prostate uh, gland enlargement. Then there is polyuria which is, which is the, which means that the daily urine output is exceeding the normal. That, that would be around 3 liters per day that happens when the patient is diabetic or if the increase, if there is an increase in the caffeine intake. Now there are some things that we need to consider when we take uh, the urine sample for testing. Urine should be treated as a biohazard. So we need to use dry cups and it should be having lids and the, uh, the label, there should be proper labeling of the, of the container with uh, the name, the date and the time of collection. And ideally the test should be done within one hour of collection but suppose if the test is not, if, if you're not able to do the test within an hour, then we can preserve the urine sample under refrigerated conditions. Now, refrigeration will prevent accumulation of bacteria, but what will happen is there will be a difference in the value of the specific gravity and amorphous phosphates. Now, you can, you, while doing the test, the urine has to be brought to normal, to the room temperature. Now, also chemical preservatives can be added in order to preserve the urine. Now, there are different kinds of uh, specimens that we consider. For It depends upon what type of test and for what reason we are taking the, collecting the urine. Okay? So, if the random urine uh, sample means that it is used for routine screening and, and the time of collection is not important. Now, fasting is done. Fasting urine is collected be, because to monitor diabetic condition. Then there is a glucose tolerance test which is also used for the diagnosis of diabetes and in this case the urine is taken one hour at an hour, one hour interval. Then there is 24 hour collection of urine. It is done for creatine clearance and also for uh, potassium and sodium checking. Then there is catheterized urine which means that the tube is placed through the urethra directly into the bladder. Then void urine sample would be collected by the patient during routine examination or routine urination. Then midstream clean catch urine is usually done for culturing purposes in order to uh, check if the patient has a UTI infection. So that means the area, the pubic area is cleaned with soap and the urine is collected. It will be uh, the flowing urine, the middle of the, in the middle of the urination, the urine is taken. Then suprapubic aspiration means that the needle is inserted into the bladder and that's how the urine is collected. Then three glass collection is used to check out prostate infection and it's used for the diagnosis of prostate glands. Then pediatric collection means that we, uh, that it, it makes use of clear as adhesive tapes which is uh, attached to, uh, to a plastic bag and it is attached to the genital area of the infant. 
The 24 hour post prandial urine would mean that it is taken after 2 hours after eating. Urination is done after 2 hours of eating and this is done in order to monitor the sugar content. Okay, thank you. Thank you.